Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with J. Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. So our broad topic is control accounts. And so we're going to look at an introduction of control accounts. So at the end of the session, you should be able to understand why control accounts are drawn up. So you would understand why businesses go through that procedure in preparing control accounts. And the other is to identify the sources of information for control accounts. Because if you're asked to do a control account, you would need to know where you, what, what you'd have to pull in order to put in the control account and where you'd have to go to get these figures. Now, before we even go down into the objective, we need to know what is a control account. And uh, the first thing there is that you need to know that control account is also referred to as total accounts. So an alternative term for control accounts is total accounts, because the, the concept is that you're pulling the totals as it relates to the particular items to prepare your control account. The control account is an account that checks the arithmetical accuracy of the ledgers. So basically the control account is like you're preparing a trial balance of the ledgers. You're checking the accuracy of those ledgers. Why? This big question, why? Why control account? And I know that for the persons that have been introduced to control account, they may be asking, but why do people prepare control account? Why do we have to go through this, right? But um, in preparing the control account, it, it has its advantages. So in preparing, you're asking the question why a control account is basically asking, what are the advantages of preparing a control account? And the first one that we're going to look at is that control accounts help prevent and or detect errors in the books. So it assists in preventing and or detecting errors in the books. The other one is that it is with a speedy preparation of the trial balance. So the fact that you're a, it, it aids in preventing and or detecting the errors, it will make it easier for the business to prepare the trial balance quickly. Another is that the control account proves that the entries in the individual accounts and their final balances are accurate. So in doing the control account, and once it reconciles with the ledgers, and of course, you're able to prove that the entries in those individual accounts are accurate. The other one is that it prevent fraud by bookkeepers. So because the control account is there to, to double check what took place in your ledgers, you're able to prevent the fraud that may occur by bookkeepers. And the final one is that the control account aids with the preparation of final accounts from incomplete records. Some businesses do have con um, incomplete records. Incomplete records meaning that they are preparing, they have been preparing single entry. They don't go through the old double entry um, process, but they may decide that they're going to start to do double entry. And of course, they may want to ascertain what is their profit or their operating at a loss, et cetera. But in doing the single entry, they wouldn't be able to, to ascertain those figures so quickly. So therefore, they would have to find out, for example, what is their credit sales for the period. And you can use a control account to ascertain that. They may want to find out what is your credit purchases for the period. And the control account also can aid in ascertaining that, will aid in ascertaining that. So these are the reasons a business superior a control account. So we have gone through the advantages, we, are, we have gone through the reasons, we have looked at why businesses superior control account. We're now going to explore the two types of control accounts. So there are two types of control accounts. And the first one is the sales ledger control account. But the sales ledger control account is also referred to as total debtors control account. 
total debtors control account. And if you should recall, the sales ledger is also known as, debt, as a debtor's ledger because of course, this is where you record your debtor's account. This is where you find your debtor's account. So you can see the connection with the alternative term there for sales ledger control account. The other one is the purchases ledger control and the alternative term is total creditors control. So we have the two types of control account here. And if you're asked to create a control account, you should know where to pick up the information to, to prepare each of these control accounts. So we're going to look at the sources of control accounts. And we're gonna start with the sales ledger control. Now the sales ledger control, remember, you're picking up the items that relate to your debtors because your debtors account is what is located in your sales ledger. We have three ledgers, sales ledger, purchases ledger, and general ledger. But one of the control accounts is sales ledger control. And we need to know the sources for that. Remember the items that link to your debtors, your trade receivables, those are what you record in your sales ledger. But we are picking up the totals. If you remember, the sales ledger control is also known as total debtors control. So we're picking up the totals as it relates to these. Now, the first item there is uh, opening accounts receivables. And the opening accounts receivables there is referring to your balances coming from the previous period. So your balance brought down. So you're opening accounts receivable. We're looking at the balances brought down. But where do you get this figure from? List of customers' balances drawn up at the end of the previous period. And this can also come from your sales ledger. So if you go to the sales ledger, you can pick up the opening balances for your debtors, your total opening balances, that is. The other item is credit sales. And your credit sales, your credit sales, you'd pick that up from your sales journal because remember the purpose of a certain sales journal is to record all the sales made on credit. The other one is return inwards. The return inwards, the total return inwards, we can find this in our returns inwards journal checks receive and we're talking about checks received from our debtors this can be found in our cash book so you look in the bank column and you'll find the total of a check received checks received from your debtors cash receive similarly remember your cash book is used to record all receipts and payments so all the cash received from your debtors, you'll find that in your cash book. And of course, it's on the received side, which is your debit side. The other item is discount allowed. And uh, remember, discount allowed is where you reward your customers for paying their balances early. So therefore, that is found in your cash book. So discount allowed is a cash discount rewarded to your customers for clearing their outstanding balance promptly. And uh, this is recorded in your cash book. So therefore, you'll go to your discount allowed column, the total, pick up the total from that, and then that would be recorded in your sales ledger control. The final one here is closing account receivable. And that is your list of customers balances drawn up at the end of the period. And again, this information, you can go to your sales ledger to pick up that. So that's your closing balances for each data at the end of the period. So the information that you will pull from that to put in your sales ledger control would be the total balances. So all your debtors with balances, you look at that, add all of those figures together, and that will be placed in your sales ledger control account. 
So we're now going to look at the sources of information for our purchases ledger control. And uh, the information that we put in our purchases ledger control, the first one there is the balances, opening accounts payable balance. And of course we know that the accounts payable, we're talking about our creditors. That's our opening balances, and that would be your opening balance brought down coming from the previous period for your accounts payable. And this, you would pick up that information from your list of suppliers, balances drawn up at the end of the previous period. And you can go to your purchases ledger and pick up the total balances, the total opening balances reflected in your different creditors account. You pick up the totals, you add up all of those opening balances for your creditors. And that information you would place in your purchases ledger control account. Next one there is your credit purchases. And remember the book of original entry that is used to record your credit purchases is your purchases journal. So the total coming from your purchases day book would give you your credit purchases to be recorded in your purchases ledger control. Return outwards, that figure would come from your return outwards day book. Checks paid to your suppliers, checks paid to your suppliers, to your creditors, that information, you go to your cash book to pick up that. Remember your cash book is used to record cash receipts and payments. So the checks paid to your creditors, you'll find that in your cash book. Cash paid to your creditors. Again, you go to your cash book to pick up that. Discount received and the business will always try to benefit from the discount given by the suppliers so that they would generate additional revenue. But where do we find the discount received, the total of discount received? Remember discount received, there's a column for that in your cash book. So we go to our cash book and pick up the total from that discount received column to get that information for our purchases ledger. And the final thing right here is closing accounts payable. Your closing balance for your creditors. Where do we get this information? List of suppliers balances drawn up at the end of the period. And also you can find this information in your purchases ledger. So you go to your purchases ledger and ascertain the balances, the closing balances at the end of the period for all your creditors add up that figure together. And that is a figure that you would place in your purchases ledger control account. So with all of that said, we have looked at the objectives where you understand why control accounts are drawn up. And remember in summary, for example, the control account is prepared by a business because it's helped to prevent and or detect errors. It also aid with the speedy record um, preparation of your trial balance. It also aid in preparing final accounts from incomplete records. And remember this big one, it aids in preventing fraud by bookkeepers. And we have also looked at the sources of information for the control account, where you go to get information to prepare your control account. Remember, there are two types of control accounts, sales ledger control account and purchases ledger control account. Everything that relates to your debtors because your sales ledger contain your debtors account, all of that information would go to your sales ledger control account because you're using that account to check the arithmetical accuracy of your debtor's ledger. The other one is purchases ledger control and everything that relates to your creditors, 
would be entered in that. We will look at the preparation of these accounts, but remember that you would use the concept of your debtors for the sales as a control account and the concept relating to your creditors for the purchases as a control account. So in preparation for that lesson, I'm advising you to refresh your memory on the double entry rule for debtors and creditors. Debtors would be double entry rule for asset and creditors would be double entry rule for liabilities because that information is necessary. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe.